Hello, this is Ron Kramer, and I uh, mentioned today that I would try and make a video tonight. As you can see, um, clouds are rolling in here, so I thought I'd start a little bit early. Um, right now it's totally clear, and um, all of the sun is set. We're just waiting for darkness to fall. I am located right here. Hopefully my mouse is recording, and uh, we can see the clouds coming in, but um, let's do a quick explanation of what I do when I run my setup. Um, first of all, it's about a hundred yards out front and this is a little IP camera inside so I can see what's going on. Uh, this is my power supplies here. I can switch each of these devices on and off and I've already done that to get things rolling here. This is our sky watcher, cloud watcher, and um, you can see it cleared up today. It's been in the green here, but um, judging, there's also a light level. When the light gets down to here, it'll be uh, dark enough to image. So we're, oh, 20 minutes away. Uh, rain and, and other features, but what I mainly watch is this one right here. And when uh, those clouds start to move in, this will come up here. And once they cross that red line, we are shut down. The dome will shut. Uh, let's see here. Here's what we got again. It could actually be, oh man, a couple hours off. But it sure looks like it's coming fast. So let's see here. Let's get going. Uh, I got it call up um, Nina. I believe I am all on equipment here. I have camera, focusers connected, telescopes. Says it's not. Let's check that. And now it is. It's got the little icon here that tells you guiders connected, weather's connected. We're all looking pretty good. Then what I usually do is go to imaging and I'll just grab a real quick, um, ridiculously quick exposure here. And uh, it's debayering down here. Hoping that my mouse is recording. And then it will appear in this area. It's stretching. And we're not going to see anything because the dome is closed. So we're just going to see noise. Alright, let's see here. First of all, we had talked about... Um, Someone said their their history was too long or too short or too fat. You can just drag these like I just did right there. You can drag it. You can size these. And you can do this with any window, any one of these. And you can see now that my guider is using this whole space. If I want to split that, I grab and hold. I'm holding the left mouse button. And then wherever I put it, you'll see this little tool pops up. If you put it on the bottom, it will split and put it on the bottom. If you put it on the left, it'll split and put it on the left. Same with top, and same with right. Or you can put it in the middle and it'll add a tab. So what I'm going to do is put it back where I had it. And I'm going to put it on the right side. See how it turns white and highlights? I'm going to put it on the white side, right, right white side of the, uh, of the uh, guiding window. So I'm going to just drop it right here and it will split. And now I've got it here, and I believe, yeah, you can even stretch and drag. But I like them about even, so that's fine. Same with here. You can put weather here, and you can put something, drag something else and put it in the middle, and you can move statistics over, and wherever you drop them. I dropped several things here into the center so that it, I had tabs. So that way I've got my uh, optimal exposure calculator, my plate solving, and my imaging right here. I don't ever want to see plate solving and imaging, so it's a good thing um, to trade off from one to the other. I got my focusers over here on the left. And again, it's nothing to take this autofocus right here and drag it, and you can put it in over there. So I like it right here. I can put it on top. I can put it, split it and put it on the right. But I'm going to put it on the bottom of those two. So, let's see. What else can we do here? I think that was... Let's look at, look at settings real quick. Here's equipment. I got my telescope. Um, you put in all your different things. Here's your camera. Filter wheel. Focuser. 
rotator. And I'm going to do this fairly quick, but you can pause if you need to and look at any of my settings, if they're of any value. Let panel, weather. Okay, and then we'll go back to imaging. We'll go into options. I hear a dog barking outside. And we can go general profiles. This is your nightly update or your, or your uh, release or beta. This is your Sky Atlas directory. And you create all these different things. You can set your colors here. Astrometry, we have uh, your latitude and longitude in there. As to equipment, you got your camera, you got your telescope specs, you got your focuser specs, which are here. Uh, weather, whether or not you want Fahrenheit, Imperial units, uh, filter wheel, right now I'm not using any. Planetarium software, Stellarium, which is in here, your guiding software. You can go into imaging and you've got your FITS files, your path where you're going to save them, your file names are here, your meridian flip options, your stretch options, annotate I have off, debayer on, debayer for half flux radius, yes, unlinked stretch, and curious what the sound is here, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I heard something rumbling and I looked out front and there was a big uh, um, truck going by. My um, dome is actually fairly close to the, well, 500 feet off the road and then another 500 feet to me almost. So. Okay, so there's our debayers, our sequence options where they can be saved, loaded, what to do afterwards. And so on plate solving, I use ASTAP and ASTAP for both. Um, exposure time for seconds, binning. I should probably put that on one or two, I mean. Huh, I don't know why I don't. I may try that later. Uh, the gain for um, shooting a uh, plate solve. Uh, all the other little options there. And that's about it. We're ready to go. So, let's see here. Let's open the dome first of all. And I'm going to bring up my browser so I can peek. And I'm going to do a open. Let's see if I can turn it down a little bit. And you can see it's quite light out there, yeah. But we could swing around maybe and look at um, Venus or Venus or something bright. I have on here my my little cursor, my my centering thing. I like how light and thin that is. Otherwise, they're obnoxious. You can click here and plate solve what you've got on the screen. I can click an older image, bring it up, and plate solve it. This is so you can check your corners, which I'm still working on. I got a new RASA, and I'm still working on my spacing. I did add about two more millimeters of space today, so this is partially to test that. Your half flux radius here and your stretch here. And I'm sorry I have birds <laughs> out front and I hear them chirping there they're just having a good time spring is in the air so let's see let's grab a, another shot here because we now have uh, sounds like they're nesting in the dome doesn't it I live in very rural area here uh, I think I did show these outlets and yep, that and that, yep. I had no idea there was going to be so much. Let's see if I can shut that off. Hold on a minute. That's quite a party out there. There. I think I got it. However, that there's some problem with the software it turns itself back on after a while so we'll cross our fingers and hope not all right I can th finally think again and let's put uh, I'm gonna do uh, about a half a second 
And I see something there already, some kind of star. We are grossly out of focus. Oh, that's because I moved my spacing. I thought, why am I out of focus? Because I, uh, put, I took out um, two millimeters. That's too much light, so we're going to bring it down. And someone mentioned that. It just means it's overexposed, so I reduce the exposure. We'll get another one, and it'll look better. Stretching. It says down here, and then it will appear. And that looks better. Now, let's see if I brought my camera inward. What would that mean? Would that mean, I think, smaller amounts? So I'm going to drop it from 34,000 to 32,000. We'll grab another test here. Hopefully the donut gets smaller. Debayering, stretching. And it's smaller, so we're going the right way. Let's do um, 30,000. And I don't imagine we could see the focus or change there. If I spun the scope around, we could. And I don't know why we didn't seem to get an exposure. Maybe I clicked a button and lost it. Debayering. Stretching. And uh, we're aiming up towards the North Star right now, so... Could be what we're seeing here. Whoa! Appears I overshot it. I would have did this ahead of time, but I forgot that when I move it, it's um, going to mess up my focus. Did I click expose? Waiting for the uh, focuser to move. Grab a frame. There we go. Now we're at least in the ballpark. And that's probably the North Star right there. So uh, what we could do, as long as we're waiting for it to get dark, is... Let's go over to Stellarium and do a um, search for Venus. Oops. <laughs> a little too late late for him, it looks like. All right, let's not do that. Uh, Sirius is bright. Probably get on him. Let's do that. I'm going to double click on it. And I am going to hit Control-1, which should slew the scope there, if everything is unparked and ready. But let's do a quick check. Apparently not. Park 3, unpark. Tracking. Let's see if we can send it there again. Make the uh, scope slave. And uh, this guy, Sirius, is going to be way to the south and then to the south. 
east. Yep, southeast. And if everything's working right, the scope should come up and point on there. But I've had some issues with uh, Stellarium working. I'm using the new ASCOM version, and I think it's still in beta. Because it should show us that the scope is pointing here. I also don't understand why Cirrus is the size of the moon right there. It's <laughs> big. <laughs> All right, let's take a shot. Should be something bright anyway. And I'm still 0.04 seconds. We should get something brighter than the North Star. There it is. All right, so there's Sirius or Cirrus. And uh, we can't really play it solve, so I can't show you that. We need more than one star for that to happen. Maybe I will pause and come back in just a little bit when it's dark. Hitting pause. I think I'm back. Still off a light out there, but let's play with something here. Some people didn't seem to know about the uh, framing wizard or the star atlas. You can look up different things here. You can go into framing and put in something like M42 right here. And it comes up with the name. You can say load image. And there's different ways to do it. You can look at it in the atlas, which is speedy, but not very pretty. And you can go to the NASA Sky Survey, which is slow. Or you can cache if you've been there before say load image and that's pretty quick oh I'm a Casper the friendly ghost up here somehow Went to the cache it's hard for me to talk and think at the same time so Get rid of the cache. I don't use that often. I usually just use Sky Atlas. M42, load image. It does. You can say SLU. You can say replaces target. Let's say SLU. And then we'll go over and take a look at the scope. Since uh, M42 it would have been fairly close to where we were, it's got to get on the other side of the meridian, it looks like. So. But I figured it's something that we can at least see quick and easy. Now there's different ways you could do it. You can go right on to M42 here in um, Stellarium, double click on it, and then go out here and click this little guy right here. And it will actually go out there and get the coordinates and put them in and the name. And it shows it where it's going to, what it looks like right here. Okay, so I said to SLU, we should be in the area. Let's do a quick test and see if we can see that we are there. Give just a little more exposure, but and hopefully it won't blow it out. Still pretty bright out there. And I don't see anything. That's probably because it's too bright. Verify our location here. Or we go up to the three, those are brighter. But let's take a longer exposure and see. Might overexpose again.
There it is. All right, so that's going to be M42. You can see we're still out of focus. Let's see if we can get away with focus in this. Um, well, it's still pretty light out just to get it done, but I'm going to do a start auto focus here. can see it moved um, five steps, I believe. And now it's coming down one step at a time. So the donuts will get smaller. Let me zoom in a little here. taking two images per focus point. And that helps average out seeing and other atmospheric issues. We no longer have donuts, we have blurry stars. They're gonna start getting smaller. Focus position was 33,000 steps position, and it's still dropping. It's about where it should be right now. And someone asked me why I had a nice V instead of a U. That's just the shape of the window. If you do this, you get a, a nicer V. I wish it was sized like that. I wonder if I put it in a spot like over here where it's taller. It would probably stretch that way. So I, maybe I'll play with that later. And this is my curve. I wasn't reasonably in focus, you should be when you start. So it uh, went a little crazy over here on this end, the right side. This is where it says it's in focus. 1.16 for a half lux radius, and let's grab a exposure here at uh, one by one bin. And we'll see the half flux radius over here and the statistics over here. And because I I do a bin two during focus, the half flux radius is a bit bigger when it comes up. It says three thirty nine now. Which is that's actually pretty good for me. Although it looks fairly soft, I don't usually even get that low. So let's reduce the exposure once while we're waiting for it to get dark. And the position is 32792. I like to put that in here just so I can remember. for next session. And uh, to change the stretch, as long as we're sitting here, this is what we've got right now. You go into Options, Imaging, and we can darken the background sky with this. I wish it were a little better. There needs to be another, like a mid slider or something in there, mids or darks, whichever one's missing. We've only got two. And then if we um, unstretch, and then 
and stretch again, it will come in darker. And hopefully we'll get some nice slider settings to change that in the future. It's quite crude, but it works. So we'll leave it there. Uh, let's go to a little longer exposure. It is getting darker. Our light level is just on the edge here, so we're just about ready to image. See if I can get away with four seconds without blowing it out. Um, someone mentioned today that they couldn't get the half flux radius history to come up. And I just noticed that mine's not either, so I'm thinking that might only be during sequences. I don't pay attention much to it because I watch over here on the right on this, the stats. We're at 484 on that shot. Not very good. I think I can get better focus on that. Looks like the trapezium is there. I'm going to run autofocus one more time because that seems high to me. And um, this is binning 2x2. Two two, so. I was going to pause it, but um, if you're bored silly, you can always jump through the video and jump ahead. I also mentioned today to somebody, you can get into all these statistics here, but they scare a lot of people. So just from being a photographer for 30 some 40 years, I learned to use the, uh, just look at the histogram. So if your data is over here on the left side and not quite touching the left, you should have good exposure and you can pull that out if you want to see it better. And you can see the very fine line here on the left. We're not smashed up against it. If you give it more exposure, it will all of this data here, the graph, will move to the right and um, show you that um, you're really overexposed. You shouldn't do that. It's the simplest way to handle it. And we're doing our focus here again. We were at 1.16, but um, I wasn't seeing that over on the uh, in the statistics anywhere near that. Yeah, I had noted it was 32.7, and. It looks like this time it's 32, 5, 6, 7, almost 8. This time it says 1.3. Actually, not reading as good. And I'm also testing my corners here because I changed... Oh, they do look better. I changed my spacing. I was getting um, warp donuts in the corners before. I added two millimeters less spacing and I, then I lost... Uh, I had good in three and still donuts in the lower left. It appears that I'm in pretty good shape. So. 
I'll look again when it gets darker. Let's try. I think we can get away with that. Eight seconds, or are we going to blow? We'll see. Your image history down here has your shots as they're taken. There's our bright one where that we blew out with the exposure. If you want, you click one of these and it will actually load in so you can look back. You can see my sky getting darker here on these last two. Getting some banding, and I'm wondering if that usually has to do with... Um, team viewer, but... It's doing the best it can, it's just because it's not dark out yet. Let's go for a bit more exposure. Let's get daring. Now I see my half flux radius over here is where I like it. I'm um, 3.4. Usually anywhere there to about 3.7. This is probably about the best I've ever focused. Oddly, sometimes it does that. It's like, did I miss it when it changed? Maybe it did. I didn't see an update. Let's add more time and see if we can do it without blowing it out. I don't want to save these either, so I turn that off. Twenty-five seconds. Downloading, debayering, which we can see down here. And I didn't even get the guider going. I don't, somehow it must have just kicked in. Stretching, and then it usually appears. Must be we're just not seeing it update. They look too similar. I'm going to do a quick peek at the guider. That did fairly well. I didn't I didn't even get it started. I didn't pick the star. The sky is not good quality as you can see up here. Otherwise the uh, star mass is much smoother. But good enough. We've all seen this, so I don't know. Do we want to go somewhere else? Let's go look somewhere else. Um the horse. Mr. Horse Aheed. I'm just gonna. I want the Running Man to, or the uh, Flame here as well. So I clicked like here in the middle between them, and that's what's cool is it will center there instead of picking Horse Head and making it center there and maybe cutting off the flames. So I click in the middle, and since I did that, I can um, go into framing. I can say go get it. It, that won't come up with horse head for the name because I picked in the middle. But I can say slew, and it will go there to the middle, which isn't a very big jaunt. And I get a lot of these little red error messages here. I think most I ignore. Unable to start direction slew. I assume it's a young program, and I get some weird times. But overall, it works well. Let's see what we shot. To speed things up, I'm going to up the ISO and to reduce the exposure. That way we don't have to sit around and wait so long. Or the gain, I should say. 
it either moved or it didn't. I got an error said it didn't move. Stretching, and then it should come up. And it moved, but it didn't go where it was supposed to. Let's try that again. I am going to, let's put it right on the horse so it brings the name in. Horse head. And then I'm going to go to framing. Click there. Horse head nebula comes in. The stats come in. When I say slew, I believe it should go to it. Didn't seem like it did much. And for some reason, it's not syncing. Normally, I see my scope there. I am going to close that and rerun it, because that usually fixes the problem. And I just think it's kind of a beta version of that ASCON. here in a minute. Some nights everything just goes perfect. Other times you just get these quirks. Sometimes for a little while and sometimes all night. Oh, we were on it. It's just really weak one because there's the flame. So we could go stretch that a little more. Stretch, stretch. 367 is my half flux radius. And it's getting dark, so let's give it some exposure. Let's give it a 60 second at 100. Save it. Shoot one. Clouds are still clear. It's the The quality of the sky is improving slowly. But we got some high thins coming in here. So it's not really going to be a great night for imaging, so good thing I'm doing a video instead. We are at 42 of 60 seconds on the horse head. Let's see if... This is working properly this time, and it is. You can see now that the scope, it says scope, and it's right it's on the horse head. So as the scope moves, this, this cursor rectangle here will move when it works right. But I find I have to reboot the software a lot. But it knows where it's pointing. That's where I clicked. And you can click in the middle, like I said, right here, and make it go there. I just did that to clarify. And we overexposed at 60. So, that's a weak one. Let's see. There isn't a whole lot up there that's bright. Let's go back, just because it's so easy to see. Control 1, and we should watch the scope crosshair here move if yep there we go and now we are on m42 again and let's grab oh let's grab 30 30 seconds of that and i'm gonna lower this down because it's still not black black out there yet What else to show here? Focus, or we did focusing. Oh, we didn't do any sequence. We can get in there, and what, what we can do here is since we're on that, you click this little thing again, 
it's it's always this like where am I location thing and it put the uh, Great Orion Nebula M42 in there and uh, you can say focus on start since we already focused I say no you can say start guiding we are you can say slew to we did and you can say center and let's center because um we want to check plate solving so we'll leave it on center and then I only focus after a half flux radius increase of five percent but before we do this we can do plate solve right here and it will plate solve the image that we already have and I saw some people were having problems with this and that's usually dependent on your um, your data that you put in for your gear that was solved just fine um, let's go into sequence I really don't want a hundred of these. Let's do um, let's do eight at um, sixty seconds. Lights, spinning, dither. I dither about every eight gain, zero offset, thirty-eight, and it should do some centering now. I believe. Looking, looking, looking. Yep. Following petitions, uh, start anyway, yes. And then we're going to go watch the scope. And I'm getting that funny red error again over here. Slew the coordinate system exception. Unable to start direct slew. It's a new one. Hascom device. Let's see. Hmm. is solving. I'll let it go. Um, maybe that's erroneous. And it will sh it's shooting, solving, and it will then move like it is right now. It's trying to center it better. Not inside tolerance. It says down here in the lower left. I still got that error, but it seems to not be the case. Check. I have tried some different things here, and I just wonder if I messed it up. It does look right. Unless it isn't slewing. Oh, it is. It did slew. It did center. So those errors, I have no idea why they came up. There's not a problem. It is now exposing the first sub. 60 seconds. And you can see, yes, it's very centered, dead center in the crosshairs. Nice exposure for the for the hot core. And you can see the, the graph over here. It's far left. As you go to expose for the finer details out here, the wispy stuff, you will blow that out. So you shoot both. You shoot, you expose with it here for the hot spot and then you'll have to ignore it because you will actually your histogram will show that you're blowing out the core over in here when your wisps are over on the far left so you have to learn to ignore the the fact that it's over too far there is our First, what do we do? 60, 60 second exposure. We got uh, running man up here. So with the RASA, this is 60, gain zero. Look how beautifully smooth that is. That's a nice camera. And we're at 56 of 60, and it'll add the next one. And we can also go in there and tell it to.
to darken it a bit. I would like a control that just gives us, just darkens the blacks. Pretty little thing there. What else? This is our uh, sequence up here. We're on three of eight. And it's working. This is our last exposure, 385. And as I mentioned, I was thinking the half flux radius history only comes up in sequence. And yes, so far we have two in the history. 3 point something here. Oh, I was going to mention, in case any of the powers that be that are programming, I, it would be really nice to be able to pass your mouse over these points and see the exact... Oh, wait. Oh, push the button and you get it. However, I don't see. Is, uh, is it 3.7? It gives you X and... Why? I'm I'm a little lost on that. This is point three, three point six, is that what they're saying? This would be higher, three point eight, because it is higher up the graph. And three point seven five, so that is what it is. So I got my wish. I just didn't push the button. So mouse on it, click left mouse button, hold it, and you can go back and look. And it's actually gotten better. This one is 3.62. So the sky is clearing. It's getting a little better. Boy, that's nice for one 60 second sub, isn't it? Just wondering if it's because it's not really dark yet. Yeah, it's it's at max darkness and um, less hazy than last night. Cleaner sky. It'd be cool to stack. Eventually, I hope that we get a, a live stack so that each one gets better and better. But since we're just playing around, why don't we increase the uh, exposure or the gain? We could do either. So to go in and play with it, it's busy. So you have to tell it to pause. Right now it's at 9 of 60 seconds, so we got to wait. You can stop it, but then it wants to warm up the camera and park the scope. And so what I do is I hit pause. And after this shot, it'll pause and it'll let us modify this and then continue. I'll go back for now. Check my corners. Yeah, they're still not great, but better than they were. Very touchy with the Rasa. And yeah, these are kind of teardrop. These are pushing out. Could be a tilt issue. Those are going around, or it's still a hair too much, we think, too much space. I'd have to bring it in another millimeter. But these were horrible last night. Yeah, they're not great, but they're a lot better than they were. They were a a donut, you could see the whole donut stretched. So they were smeared and out of focus. That corner's good. And that one's got a little smear. Almost looks like that one's too close. And this side's too far. So there's some tilt. But best I've had with the scope since I I used it. This is like third night.
All right, now we're paused. This was our last shot, 3.6 half flux radius, and that's cool. 3.59. This is actually more accurate than the one up there. And uh, we went in and hit pause. I just want to throw in some longer exposures here so we can see something cooler. So we were paused. Let's change that to um, we go 90. We're going to blow the core, but see more coolness. And um, quite sure that will be ignored. Continue. Now it's doing a 90 second exposure. Again, you can drag these and put them wherever you want them. So now the uh, guider is using the full area. And you can put what you want, what means the most to you. Something is missing. I thought I had... Oh, it was the uh, exposure calculator was in here, which is now here. So we're going to get a little more uh, light in this image. I'm just going to let the video run. I know it's long and boring, but for those that want to watch, you can, and the rest of you can turn it off and say, I've seen enough. <laughs> want no part of this. And this is odd. My guiding stopped. Did I... Is that because I stopped it in the sequence? I'm doing things I don't normally do. Oops. Let's see what's going on here. So we may get a blurred frame. Uh, and I accidentally held down shift, so I am calibrating. <laughs> Sorry, folks. You can see my, my guiding. It's trying to calibrate. I wasn't thinking. My hand was on the keyboard. Doing the west steps, and I was going to go do all the other steps. This will be a mess when it comes up at 90 seconds. Was my last calibration data. Let's see what it comes up with this time. It was pretty good. Wanted to dither and it can't because um, PhD is busy calibrating. We're going to see a squirrely image come up. It's the guiders jumping all over the place. There's our, our uh, west, east, north, south formation. The southern steps almost done. And we're guiding again. So let's send it to do another unless it's doing it already. I wonder if it was because I said off on that. Do another 90 second. That's better. I'm 
I haven't had great guiding since I switched brasses. I used to get 0.23 on my other one. This one's heavier. I had to add another weight, counterweight. And just the fact that I moved it and screwed up the balance and all that. I was barely getting under 1.0 yesterday. I rebalanced today. It's still not great. That's really poor for me, 1.2. It's stuff like that. There was no reason for that sharp off course movement. Everything's good. And then it just. There's probably a bird landing on it. <laughs> it's looking good now. array a little bit. Find a quicker correction on the deck too, so I'm gonna up that. Boy, it's high, 1.36. Waiting for our new shot. How come I don't see it? It almost seems like we uh, are not running the sequence. Oh, we're on eight. I just reset it by clicking that. It makes it zero of eight. Oh, now it wants to focus. All I can figure there is I had on start, do not focus. So all I can figure is there was a jump. Oh, there probably was a big change in the half flux radius because the previous half flux radius was the start trails. And when it sees um, a big difference over 5%, so. Just me messing around. Normally you get it going, you walk away, you go to bed. But sitting here clicking on things is just messing it up. Should have better focus, 1.38. And it is exposing again, 90 seconds. 
It's actually not a bad exposure. Not really burning that out. Now if we raise gain, if we were up at, um, I see a lot of people use a lot of gain, 200 or so, this would definitely be blown out without really helping the rest. By keeping the gain down, you get more dynamic range, so you get a lot of these faint wispies and even the black dark dust here, and your, your whites aren't blown out yet. That's actually a, um, I think that's a focus sub. That's how it looks binned. Counting down last 10 seconds. Stretching. We should see 90 seconds coming up here real quick. There we go. It was binned. Actually looked better binned, but smoother this way. But not even blown out. That's really nice. It's about max, so. All right, seen enough of this. I really don't have enough time before clouds roll in to do anything wonderful. Maybe I had to just leave it. I'm gonna pause then. I may set this at 100 and see how many I can get. Where the clouds shut me down. I am right here. I got the high wisps coming in first. Looks like less than an hour. Maybe I'll just leave it. I don't think there's anything else to show. Hmm. And give it more time. Paused. Okay, let's, uh, that is good. Let's give it, let's give it a hundred, but I know I won't get anywhere near there. All the rest looks good. I hope it doesn't focus again, and we're good, we're going. So that's it, that's pretty much it to share. I think what else we got here? It's pretty straightforward, same thing there. Plate solving, we're busy, we don't wanna do that. Focused. I don't do the flat wizard. I don't do darks or flats anymore. Uh, that is it. I can... Uh, I can go watch TV. Make sure my safety monitor is here. If uh, the clouds roll in, this will kick down and close the dome. So, 
We don't have that much time before M42 is behind my clouds, or behind my trees anyways. This is my tree line here. So that's it. I'm going to hit pause at this point and throw this online and hopefully it's helpful to somebody. And that's it.